Hi, my name is Glenn Einschlag, and I play principal bassoon with the Buffalo Philharmonic Orchestra. Today, I'm going to teach you how to put your bassoon together properly. First, we're going to start with our seat strap. Take your seat strap, put it underneath your legs with the cup on your right side. Next, you're going to take your boot joint, which is this joint right here, and you're going to place it right between your legs on the chair so it's well supported. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to take your wing joint, which is this joint, okay? It has the small tenon, which corresponds to the small hole on the boot joint. Then what you're going to do is you're going to put very carefully the tenon of the wing joint into the well of the boot joint that corresponds and you're going to very carefully twist it into place. Now, usually there's a line or two sets of arrows. I don't know if you can see, they're right there, those white tapes, that will help you align the wing joint correctly in the boot joint well. Um, also, when you're moving the wing joint, what you want to do is you want to have your fingers on the wood of the wing joint. Never touch the keys or rods or posts or pad cups, because if you twist them, that could bend them and cause air leaks. At this point, you can put your boot joint and wing joint on the floor very, very carefully, because the next joint is the long joint which is right here, aptly named the long joint. Now, you're going to put the long joint in the other hole of the boot joint very, very carefully, and you're going to line it up so that the link right here seamlessly goes into the hole, and then you're going to push it down very gently. Now, if you have cork on your tenons, what you would do before all of this is put cork grease on all of the tenons so it all goes in very easily. You could also use cork grease if you have string tenons. The last piece so far is the bell. And when you put the bell on, you wanna line up the key on the bell with the lever on the long joint so that they match like that. Now, after that, what you want to put on is your bocal. That's this very special metal piece right here. Now, this is very, very, very important. When putting on your bocal, you're going to, of course, put a little cork grease on the cork. And notice, the whisper key pad right here sometimes will be locked in place. You want to make sure that this is not locked in place because this little nipple over here on the bocal could rip off the pad. I don't know if you can see it, the pad right here, and we don't want that to happen. So always grip your bocal from this end. Never grab it from here and put it in that way. Always grab it from here because it's the most stable. Bogles are, can be very uh, delicate, <laughs> delicate, and it can be very easy to bend, break, or crack, and we definitely don't want that. So you're gonna very carefully, being mindful of the whisper keypad, place your bogle in the bogle well, and gently, very gently from here, twist it into place. Now you're ready to put your bassoon in the cup of your seat strap, and then take your reed, which hopefully has been soaking around 10 minutes or so. And also, always grab the reed by the string or glue. Never handle the reed from the blades. They are very delicate and could crack very easily. So you want to grab the reed by the glue or the string and place it very gently on the bogle. And now you're ready to play. 
I'd like to talk about how to make a proper bassoon embouchure. First, you're gonna pretend like you're whistling. Just like that. Your lips are gonna form a nice tight little circle like you're saying the vowel ooh, ooh. And you're gonna stick your bassoon reed in the center of that circle and your lips will form a nice supportive cushion around that reed. So when you form that nice supportive cushion, most of the musculature of your embouchure is gonna come from the sides of your embouchure. The sides of your embouchure are much more stable than the top and bottom of your embouchure. We do not wanna have a flat embouchure like that. We wanna have a nice circle with most of the stability and musculature coming from the sides of our embouchure. Ooh, like saying the vowel ooh. We stick our reed in the middle of it. The lips form a nice supportive cushion so that no air escapes out of our lips. And then we can make our reeds crow. Like that. Let's see how it works on the bassoon. Once again, I'm gonna form my whistle or ooh vowel face with most of my stability and musculature coming from the sides of my mouth. I'm going to put my reed in the center of that circle so that my lips can form a nice supportive cushion around the reed so that no air escapes. Let's take a nice deep breath together. Let's try that one more time. Now, did you notice something? When we breathed in, our ribs went up and out, opened much like opening an umbrella. And when we exhaled, our ribs went down and in a little bit, just like an umbrella. Let's try that again. So, when taking a breath to play the bassoon, we want to expand our abdomen and make sure our ribs are opening and moving up. And whenever a sound is coming out of our bassoon, we wanna make sure our ribs are descending and moving down and in against our engaged core. like that. Now, interestingly enough, even though the bassoon is a very big instrument, it doesn't take a lot of air to play. What the bassoon requires is fast air. So let's take a look. Look at the vocal hole, okay? It's pretty small. All the air that will ever go into the bassoon can only fit into that tiny little hole. If you huff and puff and blow all the houses down, all the air that doesn't fit in that hole will leak out the size of your mouth, thus making your tone sound thin, and we don't want that. So we want to create a very focused, compact, steady and fast moving stream of air that neatly fits into that vocal hole. And a good way, I think, to check in to see if our air is moving fast is to feel the air right behind our two front teeth. I like to think of a flaming kernel of air pressure right behind my two front teeth because that's really close to the reed. And I know if the air is moving fast by there, the air will be going very fast into the bassoon. 
Today, I'd like to talk to you about proper hand position while playing the bassoon. First, let's take a look at our hands. When playing the bassoon, we want our hands to form two opposing curves, just like this. Almost like you're grabbing something because that ensures that your knuckles are all curved in a way that's natural and comfortable. We don't want any fingers collapsed or extended like this when playing the bassoon. We want our hands to be nice and naturally curved. So let's see how that looks on the instrument. In our right hand, we make that curve and then we put it on the bassoon, just like that. Notice my pinky is not collapsing like this. My, my fingers are not splayed out like that. And even my thumb is on point and curved naturally, okay? Same thing in the left hand. First, we make that nice natural curve and we place it on the instrument. As you can see, all of my fingers are nicely and naturally and comfortably curved. No fingers are collapsed or spread out like this. They're on point, covering the holes and naturally curved. When you play the bassoon, it's very, very important that you keep your fingers very, 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 very close to the instrument when you're changing fingerings. This will keep your technique nice, efficient, and quick. If your fingers come very far away from the instrument like this, they'll have a very far distance to travel to come back to the instrument, and that's very inefficient and will slow you down. So remember, keep your hands nice and naturally curved and you'll avoid any aches or pains and the, playing the bassoon will be very comfortable. Every bassoon reed has a first wire, which is the wire that is closest to the tip, and a second wire, which is the wire further away from the tip. When adjusting your wires, you're going to want a pair of needle nose pliers, a small pair of needle nose pliers that can fit in the palm of your hand. Plus, it's important to get pliers that are scored in the jaws so that the wires don't slip out from the pliers. These can be obtained at any hardware store. Now, if your reed is, the tip opening of the reed is far too open and really hard to control, it makes your embouchure be much more open than is comfortable, you need to close the tip opening. There are two ways to do this. One way is to, at the first wire, again, the first wire is closest to the tip, you're going to crush it ever so slightly from the top to the bottom. Or another way is for you to go to the second wire, which is right here, the wire that's furthest away from the tip. And you're going to squeeze the second wire from the sides ever so slightly. But what if your reed's tip opening is way too small and you can barely get any air in there? Well, then you're gonna to need to open the tip up and you're gonna do the exact opposite. You're going to either squeeze the first wire from the sides or you're going to flatten the second wire from top to bottom. Those are some ways that you can adjust the wires on your reeds so that the bassoon reed feels much more comfortable to play. Thank you so much. Enjoy.